Hey there, welcome to that photo thing where I cover all aspects, styles, and techniques of photography. My name's Tommy and welcome to my first video. So the first couple episodes are going to be about basic composition and we're going to do different styles of composition to make a more creative shot. This is going to be really helpful for new photographers who are trying to develop a photographic eye and see more through the lens, but it's also going to be really good for experienced photographers who are just kind of in a creative rut and they're trying to get out of that and the normal habits that they've been in for a while. So I'm actually out here in the middle of a Florida scrub uh, just after a rainstorm so everything's kind of wet and still a little bit drenched so excuse any kind of sweaty water marks that are all over my clothing when I talk about this stuff but I'm out here for a very specific reason and that's if you look over at this tree branch here you'll see one, two, three, four, five. This shape right here makes a pentagon shape in the open space. And what that is, is basically the subject of our video today, which is compositional shapes in our photographic images. We're going to look at natural world shapes for this particular video. So we're looking at physical shapes of the object itself making that shape and also open shapes which are like this one here the object is kind of more making the space in between it become the shape By purposely picking out shapes for our photos, we're actually helping broaden our selective attention to see more of the outside world and potentially get a really good photograph. I'm standing next to this tree right here, and there's a physical shape in the bark of this tree of actually two rectangles right in here. If I was on the trail and I wasn't paying attention to shapes, I probably would have walked right by this tree. But now I can make a pretty good textured photograph with the two rectangles as the main subject. For my photo examples of this particular exercise, I am originally started off in macro photography. So I'm going to show a couple examples of macro photography, including this right here, the spiny-backed orb weaver photo I have here. I picked an oval shape for the composition of this shot, and technically if you look at it, it makes almost like a little triangle too, although there's no full point at the end of the triangle, so I didn't pick it for that reason. I picked it for the oval shape of its white body on the back where the spines are, and also there's a bunch of really nice perfect circles, and this overall makes for a great pleasing to the eye composition, even if it's just a little spider. Now, obviously, you don't need to do up close and personal macro photography to get shapes in your photo. Here's a nice picture of a cane toad that was hiding inside a stump. And originally, I was going to go for a macro photography shot of this because there's a much bigger opening on the other side of the stump that was really good to get up close and personal to the toad. However, this picture here, I figured was more compositionally strong because of the circle that perfectly outlines him on this part of the stump and kind of showcases him as well as nice leading lines that go right to that circle. Now the physical shape in the natural world might be actually a little difficult to find. So you could also opt over for the open space shapes like we showed with the Pentagon earlier, which is essentially when natural objects make a connected shape. So you have four branch, like four branches will pull out a rectangle or a square, or maybe a knot in a tree is a circle with a big open hole in the middle of it. So that open space circle is perfect for that. Technically, that's also a physical shape too for the actual part of the knot. So there's a lot of fun little things like that. And I'll show a couple examples of open shape now. So here's a photo that I took of just some grass blades growing off the side of a tree. We have a lot of, uh, during wet season, which is right now here in Florida, 
we have a lot of moss that grows on the sides of trees and little plant matter that comes out of it. In this case, this grass bent in just such a way that it makes a perfect triangle shape coming off of the side of the tree, and it even is accented with an archimedal spiral, which we'll get into in a future episode. Here's another photo I took of a spider sleeping on a leaf. Uh, sorry if you are afraid of spiders, I happen to like them, so a lot of my macro photography will have spiders in it. Uh, but this is a garden orb weaver spider, and they hunt at night and sleep on leaves in the day. And I took an open space shape lesson for the composition of this one. Uh, way back when I was actually doing this personally as an exercise as well. And what it is, is on the two front legs here of the spider in particular, you could see a negative space of, tri of, of a triangle in where his head is. Also, this is compositionally nice in a lot of other ways, such as it's in the rule of thirds. The legs go into a point just like the leaf does. And of course, more compositional physical shapes of its back is a perfect circle. And the two water drops after this rainstorm that just happened, these two water drops also made a perfect circle. So we have a lot of compositional options to choose from from a variety of shapes to empty space in between that appears as a shape. Very nice little exercise to play with that certainly helped me practice even more. All right, so here comes the time of the episode where we do that photo thing. And what that photo thing is, is I'm gonna challenge you as the audience to go out and do the photo thing that we just discussed in this episode. So for example, today's episode is the physical shape of the environment or the open shape of the environment. You're using shapes, pick any shape you feel like, but just use the shape in the natural occurring world and go out and use that as the main subject of your photo. Try to avoid the human element of the shape because a side of a building's not really that photographically stim stimulating. It's not really gonna help you uh, learn and explore in what we're trying to do, which is opening up your mind a little bit more into, the, into your photographic eye. If you like what you did and you want to share it with the world, please feel free to post it on Instagram and add the hashtag that I'm going to display right here. This hashtag will be a nice selection. The whole community will be able to get to see your photos and see what you created. And after a few episodes or so, I'm going to pick the best examples of that and we could post it up as a YouTube and discuss it together. If you like what I did here and you learned something out of this, please consider liking and subscribing. And if you want to follow my own personal Instagram, uh, please follow this Instagram right here at Danger and Focus. There's two underscores in the name. And I promise you there's not a lot of macro spiders. There's just some here and there that I'll pepper in there. So, But anyway, so I hope you learned something today. I hope you enjoyed this first video. And let's go out and do that photo thing.